Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready to try to find out the general equations of how to calculate the current through each of the three branches when we have three branches in parallel, each of the branches having a separate resistance. Notice we have a general current I entering the branch point and we're going to determine equations on how to calculate the current through each of the three branches. Remember the previous video we looked at the general case and we realized that we could calculate the current through any one of the branches relative to the current through the other branches by the inverse of the relationship between the resistances. With other words, we can say that I1 would be equal to the ratio of R2 divided by R1 times I2. In other words, if the resistance in R2 was twice the resistance in R1, then the current through I1 would be twice the current through R2. If this was three times R1, then the current here would be three times the current through this branch. So that's why we can relate the current through any one branch to the current through any other branch. In the same token, we can say then that I2 can be written as R3 divided by R2 times R3. Oh, not R3, but I3, of course. And finally, we can say that I3, or I1, can be written in terms of I3 as follows. This is equal to the ratio of R3 divided by R1 times I3. Now we're going to again go to the point that we know that the sum of the currents, I1 plus I2 plus I3, must equal the total current entering the branch point. And notice that we have I1 written in terms of I3, and we have I2 written in terms of I3. So we can plug those values in instead of I1 and I2. I1 cannot be written as R3 divided by R1 times I3, plus I2 can be written as R3 divided by R2 times I3, and of course we still have I3, which is equal to I. And then, of course, we can factor out an I3 that makes this look as follows. R3 over R1 plus R3 over R2 plus 1 times I3 is equal to the total current I. And make that look like a 3. All right. Now, notice we're going to combine these three. That means we need the common denominator, which looks like R1 times R2 means that this can now be written as R3 times R2 divided by R1 times R2. I multiply the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator with an R2. I can do the same here with R1, so plus R3 times R1 over R2 times R1. Again, I multiply the numerator and denominator times R1. And then plus 1 can be written as plus R1 R2 divided by R1 R2. Again, that simplifies down to 1. Multiply this times I3 equals I. Now notice I have a common denominator for all three fractions. R1 times R2, so I can write all that over a common denominator. So this can now be written as, let's see here, and I'm going to rearrange that. I'm going to write this one first. So I'm going to write this as R1 times R2 plus R1 times R3, R1 times R3 plus R2 times R3, so there's kind of a, a certain order to them, so this is a 3 here, all divided by the common denominator of R1 times R2, multiply that times I3, and that will of course equal I. And finally, I can now write I3 in terms of I, in terms of all these resistors. So now I can say that I3 is equal to, multiply this times I, and divide this so I cross multiply, cross multiply this way, so I get the ratio of R1 times R2 divided by R1, R2 plus R1, R3 plus R2, R3 all multiplied times the current I. And here's our first equation that shows how we can calculate the current through branch, the third branch, in terms of all the resistors in the three branches times the total current. Now notice that the denominator will always be the same and the numerator will be the values of the other two resistors in the other two branches. So that, that way we can say that I2 can now be written as, in the numerator we'll get R1 and R3 
the resistors in the other two branches, so R1 times R3 divided by the sum of these three terms, R3 R1, plus R2, R2 plus R3, R3, R3 multiplied times the total current I, and that will now be the equation for the current through the second branch. And finally, the current through the top branch, again, what we'll see here is I1 will be equal to the ratio, but again, in the numerator, we'll have the two resistors of the other two branches. In this case, that will be R2, R3, R1, R3 divided by plus R2, R1, R2, R3, R3 plus multiplied times the total current. And that's how we determine the current through each of the branches. Now, if you want to check to see if this is correct, all we have to do is plug in these three equations back into our original equation. For I1, we plug in this. For I2, we plug in this. And for I3, we plug in this. Notice we'll have the sum of three fractions. In each case, the denominator of the three fractions will be exactly the same. And in the numerator, we'll get R1 times R2 plus R1 times R3 plus R2 times R3. And therefore, you'll see, and I might as well show you what that looks like. If we now go I1 plus I2 plus I3, this will then look like as follows. This will then look as R1, R2 plus R1 times R3 plus R2 times R3 divided by the common denominator R1 times R2 plus R1 times R3 plus R2 times R3, of course, all multiplied times the full current I. And notice that this whole fraction will be equal to 1, so the sum of the three will add up to the total current I. And that's how we know that the three equations must be correct, because when we add them, we get the full current I. And that's how we can see the three equations determining the current to each of the branches. Now, in the next video, I'll show you an example of how to use these equations.